Hey everyone, Sam here. And in this video, we're going to be learning how to add interactions to our Lottie animations using the Lottie Interactivity Library. This video does follow off from the previous lesson where we learned how to add the Lottie player to our website. So if you need help with that, be sure to check out that video before starting this one. But otherwise, in this video, we're going to be learning how to sync up animation to the scrolling of the page, how to play different parts of our animation, how to sync up the animation to the movement of our mouse, and also how to play two different parts of the animation, one whilst it's idle, and the second part when we hover over it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first things first, we need to get up and running, adding the Lottie interactivity library to our website. Um, for that, head over to the Lottie Interactivity GitHub page and scroll down and find the link to the CDN. You can then copy that and in your web page, scroll down to the bottom of it. And here, just under the Lottie Player CDN link, we're going to paste the Lottie Interactivity link and we're going to have to add some JavaScript code for the interactions. So I'm going to add a local path to that. And so I'm going to link to a folder called JS. And inside that, I'm going to have a file called interactions.js. And let's just create that so that we don't write our interactions in the index.html file. It will be just a bit more readable having them in a separate file. OK, so we've got our JS file. We've got the Lottie player. We've got interactivity library. And we should be set up to start adding interactions to our Lottie animations. OK, so now we can start the search for the animations we need for our website. And on my landing page, I need something business related. Um, and that's going to work well synced up to the scroll wheel. So looking at these animations, um, this one could work well, or this one with the spinning cogs. I quite like the gradients on the spinning cogs. So I'm going to use this animation. And if you open it up and uh, scroll down just a little bit, you see this link to interactivity. And this is going to help us out a lot, setting up interactivity for all our different animations. Because as you can see, we get our examples of interactions set up for us. And so here we can just scroll down to sync Lottie with scroll. And as you can see, we've got our animation synced up to the scroll. And the two different parts to this is the Lottie player and then the Lottie interactivity code. So the Lottie player element is needed in the HTML. Um, and you can place this in the HTML where you want it to appear on the website. And then the interactivity co code is what's going to make it sync to the scroll. So we're going to grab the Lottie player element, head over to our HTML code and paste it in just like that. You can then style it with the different sizes uh, needed for your website. And here you can see it's got an ID. This is important because we're gonna need this ID in the interactivity code. I'm gonna rename it and call it um, Lottie Scroll Sync. And now I'm just going to add some Tailwind CSS classes. There we go. OK, so we've got our player set up. And we've got our animation that's popped up. But as you can see, it's not doing anything at the moment. So let's rig it up to some interactivity code. So let's just grab this and paste it into interactions.js. 
if you change the ID of the element, you're going to have to grab it and paste it in here to the player property. And as you can see, when the element is visible from zero to one, so the top of the animation to the bottom of it, it's going to go through frames zero to 300. If you wanted the animation to start playing when half of it was visible, you can uh, set 0 0.5 and that will start playing the animation when half of it is visible. But if you set 0, as soon as it's visible, it's going to start playing the animation and sync to the scroll. So here we go, let's refresh. And as you can see, just as we start scrolling, it's playing the animation and it's synced up to the scroll wheel. Okay, that was pretty simple. As our website says, let's look at some more interactions. So sometimes you find an animation and you only want to play a part of it, but you don't really want to go through perhaps um, cutting the animation manually. And so Lottie Interactivity actually allows you to play uh, parts of an animation. And for example, in this puzzle animation, I don't want to see um, these puzzle elements coming into frame and then leaving. I want the puzzle to stay on screen all the time. And so I'm actually going to look at the frame numbers to see the segments I want to play. And so here, I'm gonna start around here. So yeah, frame 105. And then when they smile again, around frame 200. So 105 to 200. And we can just click on the interactivity button once again. And here we're gonna look for the play segments interaction type. Here we go, play segments. So I'm going to once again copy the Lottie player, add it to my HTML. Let's call this segment Lottie. And I'm just going to remove the styling. Okay, let's grab the JavaScript. Here we go. And the ID I changed. Segment Lottie. Okay, and so it's going to loop. And for the moment, it's set to 75 and 150. So I said I wanted frame 105 to 200. So let's check that out now. If we just scroll down. There we go. We've got the segment I was looking for. So that's one way to just play parts of an animation you like. So now we're going to learn how to sync up an animation to the movement of the cursor. And so for this example, I found this lovely animation by David Gomez. And what, when I was looking at this, um, I sort of recognized that you will have to select um, the right frame amounts for this to work nicely with this type of animation. And because as we move the cursor from left to, to right and right to left, uh, it'd be nice if the bool followed the cursor. And if we start at frame zero, we can have a look at, at what that looks like. Um, so let me just find that for you. So just scroll down and sync cursor position with animation. So if we start from frame zero, as you can see, the, the bool is actually on the right. And so it's going the opposite direction to the, to the cursor. And we can sort of fix that 
um, by choosing which frames we want to sync the cursor position to. But um, yeah, let's get started just integrating it into our HTML first. So once again, I'm going to copy the Lottie player. And in my HTML, I'm going to paste it in, rename the ID. Let's just grab some interactivity code, grab the ID, and let's just check that out. Okay, so yeah, it's not syncing too well to the cursor. So let's have a look at that. What we're gonna do is go to the player and find the frame where the ball goes from left to right. And so there we go. So it starts about frame 40. So frame 40 is where we want to start. And then we're going to swipe right, it will go through. And then our cursor will be here. When we go right to left, it'll actually start playing it in reverse. And so the ball will go through the bigger ball and back here. So we want to use frame 40 to frame 80. So here we go. In our interactivity code, we're going to use frames 40 to frames uh, 80 or 81 is fine. And you can, you can see here the mode's cursor and the type is seek. So that's all set up for us. The position as well. Um, so let's have a look at that. Okay, that's behaving a bit better now. It's still not coming out the other side. So let's just give it a little bit of help. There we go. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to add a few more frames so that we get the full, fully round circle at the end. And let's go back a bit here on the left side. Voila, there we go. That's following very nicely now. So that is how to sync up the animation to the movement of the cursor. So now I want to show you how you can have two different states in your animation. One where it's going to be idle, where you're not interacting with it and it's going to loop a portion of the animation. And when we hover over it, it's going to loop over a defined segment of the animation. And with this plane animation, I want it to, for example, uh, just have this sort of static, um, well, I want this sort of horizontal flight path um, where it's just flying around. And when we hover over it, I want it to start doing its sort of barrel rolls. And that should look good. So for that, we're going to check out the interactivity code once again. And this one is called play segments on hover. So if we go down, so we've got play segments and we've got play segments on hover. So we're going to copy the Lottie play code once again, head over to our HTML, paste it in. We're going to add the interactivity code, copy that, paste it in. Let's just change the ID. And this is going to be uh, segments, segment hover dotty. There we go. 
And so we've got a few more actions going on in this part. And so what this means when we set the mode cursor is that the cursor is going to be the thing interacting with our animation. And in our actions, we set the position. So x 0 to 1 and y 0 to 1. So that just means when our cursor is inside the container, the type is loop. So we're going to loop our animation when the mouse is inside the container. And then we just set some frames. So we're going to have to change this to the part where it's doing the barrel rolls. And then the second action has a position of x minus 1 and y minus 1. So when the mouse is outside of the container, for the moment it's at type stop. And that means it's going to stop at a certain frame. Um, well, it's going to stop at frame 0 when the cursor isn't in the animation. So as you can see, it's outside, it's just stopped, and when we go in, it's flying around. What we want though is it for it to sort of do that um, more relaxed flight path. So we're going to have to find the frames for that as well, but we're going to change its type to loop. So now we've just got to sort of find the correct frames we want. And I'm going to start off with the sort of casual flight path. And let's try and get it to look like a perfect loop. So if I start at 480, it's going to fly around. OK, so 480 and then 606, that looks all right. 480 and 606. And when we're hovering it, I want it to do some barrel rolls. So let's grab. Um, let's grab from frame 111 to frame 478. This is going to be a bit finicky. You're going to have to play around with it uh, depending on the animation. Um, yeah, so let's see how that looks. So whilst it's idle, it's flying around, just you know normally. And when we hover it, it's gonna start doing some barrel rolls. And that's gonna loop that segment. And I think I can cut it a bit shorter so the barrel rolls sort of um yeah, look like it's looping. So I'm gonna have a play around with that for a minute. Okay, so I've had to play around with the frames and now I've got the idle segment looking like I want it to. And when we hover over it, it's gonna start doing its barrel rolls and loop on that segment of the animation. So there we go, we've added various different interactions to our Lottie animations. And it really helps make our website look and feel a lot more interesting Adding Lottie animations already is a great step in doing this, but having simple interactions with the animations as well is just the cherry on top. If you enjoy adding interactions to your Lottie animations, be sure to watch the repository and leave us a star on it, as we've got some very exciting features coming out very soon. See you in the next one.